know who the fuck to trust. Is it my friend or my foe? I'm a ex bro. Yeah, she give me that claim as well. I remember back when I was younger, I was happy. Nowadays, feel like no one understand me. I'm good at all this, silly, I'm about to blame me. Baby, it's yellow text. She wanna eat me like candy. Run up the racks, track me. I'll run up the racks like an athlete. I remember, I remember. That's it, we're starting. We're starting. We'd really love you to do the intro. Yeah, you want me to just intro it? Yeah, yeah, just real classic off the whatever you got. Mates and Plates, episode four, Olympic champion Kyle Chalmers, tattoo champion Laz, football champion and new captain of Adelaide United, and the inner game journal Stefan Mork. And I was just walking past Kyle's house and I just wanted a free feed because I'm unemployed. Jared Walsh, here I am. Thanks, boys. That was no, brilliant. We've, take, we've taken the strays. What? We've taken in a few strays. Yeah, we have. This right. is not our first one. Look at the guys here. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's do it. All right, let's uh, the world, we've got a, should we talk about what we've got? Yeah. We've got a little dal. A little bit of dal. Yeah. Yeah, this is Laz's choice. What nah. sort of beans are these? This is edamame. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very healthy. From Sushi Train. Straight out of Sushi Train. Yep. We sat there, popped Man, them all ourselves, good. brought them in. I didn't know where else you could get them from in Adelaide, so <laughs> straight to Gintaro. Good. Good. No. So, yeah, what no. are you finding doing these, doing these chats with people? You've spoken to some interesting people, but you've spoken mm. to footballers in the off season, mm -hmm. basketballers in the pre season. Now you've got Stefan, who's basically in season, so you wouldn't want to give him food poisoning. But uh, what, what's coming out of these chats that you are probably the most enjoyable experiences for you guys? Just learning. I think it's been great to have people on from all different walks of life mm. who have all made their way as professional athletes in different way and just being able to pick their brains and learn as a person and grow as a person, it's been great. Like last week, mm. those boys we had on last week was super inspiring. Yeah. Um, I find it very inspiring being around people that are very driven. Yeah. And I get a lot out of hearing what motivates them and what... Because th these guys have a very big, uh, very big drive and it's, it lifts you up being around and hearing about how they go about their life and their food and, their, and uh, yeah, I love it. Meet everyone. We met, we met like, people from all walks, all different sports, and uh, it's really cool, man. The other thing was really good with that intro. Then mm. I think you could be the third person on this panel of interviewers. Love to <laughs> any time. That would be good. Got the wine. Cheers, boys. <laughs> yeah, Thanks cheers. for having us. Thank you. Thanks for bringing the wine. The athletes uh, the no, wine. on the waters. And the, the, first, spring water. the first, hmm. the first person we've had that's brought a gift. I'm mm. learning um, in my old age, mm. I'm loving wine more than anything. And mm. I find I'll drink beer for consumption now instead of just sitting back and really enjoying beers. But mm. with wine, I'm getting better. It's kind of like, you'll drink coffee. Yeah. You can understand now, really good coffee. You love your coffee, like good yeah. coffee and a shit coffee. Mm. So with wine, I'm finding, and in South Australia, uh, we are so lucky to have mm. Barossa, McLaren Vale, like 50 minutes away. Where well, you guys train, it's like 10 minutes away, the Barossa Valley, because you're really sad. <laughs> Tell us about pre-season. Tell us about the body. Tell us about the mind, most importantly. Yeah. Where are you at, man? Where are yeah, you at? Yeah, we're um, under two weeks before the first game. So we played Western United. Just come back from uh, Sydney. We had a couple of friendly games, which was good. Mm. Um, Are you having crowds this year? Crowds, yeah, seventy-five percent capacity. Okay, um, okay, okay. So that's twelve and a half thousand at Coopers, which is perfect. That's good, man. Um, can't wait to see Kyle in the Red Army. I'll be back there. Spoke to about the people today as well. Getting your tickets in the really? Red Army, yeah. How good's that? <laughs> you know, one of the things he first said to me. It's like I love Adelaide United. You know who my favourite player is. Like what? He's like Mark Ocheen. <laughs> and you could have picked anyone. Like he's a legend, but you could have picked anyone from that era. And do you know why? It was just before the Olympics. You guys, it was like one of the first games of the FFA Cup. Oh, yeah. And they were throwing out side little tidy bounce balls before the game. Mm. And I was like, Oach! And I think I was one of the only people that knew who Oach was. Yeah. <laughs> and he's thrown the ball to me. And I just thought it was the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. There you go. And from then on, I've seen him a couple of times, but... Still probably too nervous. He's one of my favourite athletes. <laughs> He's not doing much at the moment, yeah. unfortunately. No, <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, that's crazy, isn't it? That's how it all starts. I think that's what um, we're trying to do a lot this year is give back to the community. And now that the games are starting, we get crowds. 
hopefully they all come back and I think small things like that I did when I was a kid I got the same I think it was from Travis Stodd oh yeah and I loved him you yeah know, have the signatures and mm. I think I've still got the ball somewhere at home um, at my mum's place so and now you're skipper about. yeah exactly so we're um now we're looking good we're uh, we're all excited it's been a crazy pre-season with not knowing exactly when we're going to start then we found out the dates then COVID came back here and mm. we we're in lockdown for five days back training and now we're just excited to uh to get started and body's body's holding up which is the main thing no injuries anymore um mine's going good and being is it, is it your first start as a captain yeah mm. yeah so the junior national teams i was um but this is the first one awesome the, man yeah, I guess. Yeah. Are you an Adelaide boy? Yeah, Adelaide boy. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Ah, so it's that's a rare. Fairy tale story, isn't it? Excellent, man. <laughs> wow. How do you get elected as a captain? Um, so at Adelaide this year, they 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 picked the leadership group. So probably about a month ago, um, I think it was Bruce, Cosie, and Cole, um, along with the other coaching staff. They probably had a meeting and, and outlined the the club values and what they want to do going forward and. Um, the main thing was, was creating a good culture within the, the team. So they selected myself, Ben Halloran and Jordan Elsie in the leadership group. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to know who was going to be captain. We all walked out of that meeting saying, who's, uh, who's captain? Um, and they didn't say anything. And then a few weeks later, they, they pulled me aside and uh, let me know in front of Eugene Kolekovic, who's the goalkeeper coach, ex-captain. He was my captain when we won it. And then Ross Adelusi, who's an ex-captain and now assistant coach. Um, so it was pretty special to be told told that and then yeah since then it's been maybe a couple of weeks and doing plenty of plenty of interviews and photo shoots and yeah it's all all pretty exciting man and, the face of adelaide at the yeah. moment uh, yeah i see you everywhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. i think i saw you in a bus the other day yeah. on the back of the bus yeah. well, in the bus yeah. on the back in the bus <laughs> on the way to elizabeth okay. right? <laughs> you've been doing that a lot though like personal branding which mm. i think is really important because we've had the captains we've had Previous to you, like uh, Jakobsen and Isaias, uh, more more recently, a lot of foreign captains. And there's nothing wrong with that when it comes to football. But connecting with an Australian audience and stuff, you've got the advantage now of connecting with Adelaide people and promoting your. We we're talking about it earlier. Like your personal brand's really important now. Yeah. You need to do that. Yeah, I think that's the way the world is now. Is it's you know you're competing to get kids to games um, not just against other sports but you're competing against playstations and ipads and iphones and to get their attention i think is is through your own personal brand probably more than anything else and if the kid feels that attachment to you through your social media because they're on their phones all the time they'll want to come to the game and that's something that you know i've tried to do um, for myself outside of football which has been a, a cool thing and um, the guys from fuel my social have been Helping me out on that. I was just and, about to mention them. I was just about to and, mention um, them. Yeah, now especially with my own business that I've just started up during COVID in the Inner Game Journal. So I've got my my journal here, which is a gift Hasn't for... Hasn't you uh, the exact <laughs> journal look at as well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you can have it here or right here. <laughs> so yeah, so it's been a really cool thing to, um, so I guess, learn that side of it. And, and in football, everybody plays football in this country when they're kids but to get them to be a-league fans has been a big struggle for years and everybody loves the premier league but it's about getting those kids to love adelaide united um, mm -hmm. which is what i did as a kid so if i can be a hero for a kid um, and make them want to come to the game and inspire them to be a professional that's that's, right. that's what it's all about 100 percent. that's really cool tell us about your journey mate uh, man, how did you get on all this man you're on everything you're on the yeah. basketball the, the football the cricket all the sports How did all this happen? How, what happened here? Uh, I started, uh, I started uh, in radio like mm. 17 years ago. Oh wow. So I was doing stuff um, at the ABC a little bit, but then uh, I was approached because a new radio station was coming to Adelaide called Nova back in 2004. And they said, hey, do you want to have a go at working as part of the street team? So handing out icy cold cans of Coke. Yeah, and I said, yeah, that'd be great. Going to events and all that. Yeah, yeah. So we had this van, which is like a big television van that has a huge antenna at the top of it. Mm. And there was one night, it was a Thursday night, I think I parked it at the West Beach Surf Life Saving Club. And I was driving out and I felt this boom. I'm like, oh, what's just happened? And then I watched the antenna fall oh. over the van. I forgot oh, to put no. it down. So I hooked into power lines. Oh, no. Power lines came down. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, more concerned about losing my job. Would have cost a fortune. That cost the country, uh, the company, 150 grand. Oh my god! So the next day, they said, 
we can't have you driving the car, obviously, because the car's a wreck. <laughs> that, do you want to have a go on the radio? I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> really? I never really wanted to be on, on the radio. Wow. But from that, like, I've always loved sports. I grew up with sport mm. in Tasmania with my family and then... Um, but you're a Tassie boy. Well, I was born in Ballarat and then moved yeah, to Tassie right. when I was two and then came here when I was 15. Yeah. But I always felt connected to sport. Yeah. Because um, in Tasmania, there's, no, there's really no professional clubs at the top no. tier so now like in the NBL there's going to be uh, Tassie maybe cricket grasshoppers yeah the cricket yeah, yeah. yeah. The, what are they called the grasshoppers the, uh, jack, jumpers. jack jumpers yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and they're the little jack shits jack jumpers man which mm-hmm. I kind of like the name behind it because they bite you and you okay. <laughs> sorry um, but coming to Adelaide you know you can go alright I'm going to go to my first AFL game in Adelaide was a showdown right. it was great and then I started going to Adelaide United Games and I got a connection with the club where I started looking after their, like volunteering on their sponsor functions. And then I loved doing it. Um, Got to know the people at the club. And then from that, it just kind of snowballed a little bit. But I find... That's a great story. I wasn't expecting that. No, I don't don't recommend it. But I I like, (laughs) I, I never take for granted emceeing like that's my real passion i'm not in radio anymore and i don't really miss it like it's really it seems like it's really your thing man you're just very natural at it but f- for yeah. me it's uh i'm lucky because i'm like i'm literally a fan that holds the microphone if yeah. i can't so if i yeah. if i chat to stefan if i'm sitting here going mate here's the 17 questions that i've been told to ask you then i'm not going to do it because mm. i need to be mm-hmm. like believe in what I'm saying to him and show that I care. Mm-hmm. So I want to feel connected. And the, the most connected I've ever felt was, I went to Shanghai with Port Adelaide. Oh wow. And I went yeah. to two things. You, you were over there the first time I was there. The first time? Yeah. yeah. And that, I got to know every person that worked at the club. Mm-hmm. And I realized as a radio presenter, as a MC, you're the end product of all the hard work that goes into 100%. it without the hard the working team. team behind you. Yeah. So to get to know all of them and show like um, gratitude mm-hmm. and just be kind to people, then mm-hmm. things open up. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be someone will take over from me one day. It's as simple as that. I'm getting older, so someone's going oh, to. Come on, mate. Uh, we'll just, that will happen. The face of sport. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's an aging face. You look 20 years old, mate. Oh, until I take my hat off, then I look 90. Um, but it's. How I kind of treat people is that thing. Actually, remo- thought of you. I thought of you. Yeah. I'm okay, thanks, man. Um, this is amazing, by the way. This is incredible. Is it? Yeah, it That's is good. It's very nice. When you came back from the Olympics, um, so Kyle was with, did you do his stuff with TLA? Yeah. And then I, there was an opportunity to speak to him. And I spoke to you and I said, okay. So I, I met you a few times before and we had an awesome connection. Yeah. Like you, my friend. Mm. And I said, okay, I don't want to just speak to you. I want to give you a cool experience because you, how old were you then? 18? Yeah, 18. Yeah, so you're a kid yeah. that's just had this overwhelming experience before you get on the plane to go to the Olympics. You're like, you're a hopeful and you come back and everyone wants to be your friend and knows who you are. Yeah. But we so, were actually friends. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's it. We so, were genuine. Well, I went, okay, let's go to the 36ers, the basketball court, and we'll have a chat to him and sit down. That, when I got back from that, the, one of the shows I was working with was so mad at me because they didn't get the interview. And they were all going, oh, no, Kyle's done this breakfast show, this breakfast show, this breakfast show. Yeah, I remember and that. And I, I said to them, like, immediate. hold on, Kyle's also a person that I wanted to have five minutes to sit down and go, are you okay? Like, let's have a chat. Well done, man. And give you like five, 10 minutes of actually being comfortable. Yeah. Cause you know how media works, right? You go, if you sit down with them, they go, okay, what's the agenda? What can we click bait out of this? What's the 30 second mm-hmm. grab we can use out of the five minute chat? Mm-hmm. And I loved that. And literally the amount of shit that it caused, that's one of my proudest moments because wow. I got to spend time with you and just talk about how you were just because you uh, achieve those personal goals which is fantastic for you and the country didn't change who you are mm. so I wanted to talk to you as the person yeah. and not as the medalist even though I almost dropped your medal <laughs> <laughs> that was a great, that's a great story I've never heard it like that that's cool yeah. and then we got to play a game of horse that's it man and then Joey the came out with the players yeah. and that, that, if that could have helped you Joel escape that day then Joel would have been there yeah been that was that, that anyway. was the end of my oh actually I then I had to go to school but that whole morning was so overwhelming and then that was just the biggest relief for me just being able to yeah. talk to a mate a familiar face but you guys have like as, as athletes and that's why you've got the journal you can 
what we don't see is what actually goes on inside your head. And yeah, you can have, you can go to a press conference or go, ah, oh, you know, things are, are really good at the moment. But then you go home and go, hold on, I'm not feeling right or um, I've got my own goals that I want to just keep internally. Is that something that motivated you? Yeah, I think that was probably the main thing is, is as an athlete, you grow up and Kyle obviously did it when he was really young and, and I was 16 when I first got my first contract. Um, not quite the Kyle standard of Pop being the, the face of Australia, but um, I think it's the same. It's the same thing where you go from being uh, someone that loves the sport to being professional, which was your goal, and then all of a sudden you're just associated as Stefan, the footballer, Kyle, the swimmer, and I'm like you said, we're, we're people. So then when the sport's not going well, it's like, well, I'm worthless essentially, right. because that's what everyone associates with you. And, yeah. and then you start to think that as well. I have a good session, I'm, I'm on top of the world. Mm. Nothing can stop me. If I have a bad Probably. session, it's like, I hate my life. Mm. My whole life's ruined, but mm. I've got you know, 20 days, uh, 20 hours in the rest of the day. Mm. But you just feel that, I guess, big down mm -hmm. that it shouldn't happen because we're, like you said, we're people first. And that's what now, why I brought out the journal was the main thing was to to focus, to teach athletes to become more mindful, um, more present and understand, yes, this will help you, I think, become the best athlete, but I hope it will become more of a tool that you used to be the best person you can be and understand that, yeah, you can be um, an athlete, but that's what you do and that's not who you are. And I think that's a, a big message of AFL players that get drafted, they get into trouble. Mm. You look in the, the A-League, some players, they come in and they go out, and NBL. I'm sure it's the same everywhere. It's just nobody takes the time to actually talking through these things because nobody that's in sport I guess wants to speak about it maybe and then everyone outside of sport doesn't understand it so it's it's a hard subject and it's something that you um, yeah, you need to I guess talk about and, and the players and, and athletes need to start to understand. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I thought when you were announced as captain, I haven't said this to you because we're mates and plates, everything's out on the table literally. Yeah. Air, Have air you thought longer. about how <laughs> you Two, two parts, right? Part one, did you feel that being away from Adelaide and having all of the experiences that other clubs has built you for this moment now because you've got a bit more life experience? And then two, have you thought about the different ways that you're gonna to have to communicate with people because you've got Tommy Urich at the club who's proven goal scorer for the Socceroos. You've got Dom Costanzo who's basically just started to grow into a man you can't talk to them the same uh, way. Yeah, part one, I think definitely. Uh, going through all the different teams I've been at, being overseas, um, in the national team setups, at the other clubs, I think you just start to understand different personalities, coaches, um, the way, I guess, clubs are structured, and I think that all comes back to leadership. Um, and it's something I was really interested in, and I guess just tried to develop myself and, and when the chance came back, uh, came to me to come back to Adelaide, I was thinking, yeah, this is a great moment to come back to Adelaide United. But I, funny enough, my main goal was I'd love to be able to, I guess, influence the culture there and to create something as a massive Richmond fan. <laughs> the similar thing to what they've done, I think, you know, you, you go beyond sport um, and you look at what they've created there as a family. Um, and that's something that I'd love to be able to do for the people in Adelaide to get behind the club and, and the players are involved in it. And, um, that's definitely was my goal. Um, and I think part two to that, speaking to the different players is something that's gonna be a big challenge. Because like you said, you've got players that have played for the Socceroos, played in World Cups, and you know I can't go to Tommy Urich and say, this is how you finish. Um, but I think my job is to try and get him to feel as comfortable as, as he can and, and to trust me that whatever I say or do, is gonna to be to make him a better player, to make the team win, and, and the same with Dom, and maybe the message is different, but I think the, the end goal is the same, and I, I think I'm a nice person off the field, and that's that's the, the way I wanna go about it. If I have to take someone out to dinner or go for a coffee, that's something that I think is a, an enjoyable thing, or you know, bring my mates and plates. I think that's a, a good thing to do. Imagine having a full on <laughs> team chat team with your dinner. game, and like you guys are just watching it. Yeah. 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 I just hold the camera. <laughs> um, but no, it's a cool it's a cool thing to be able to to be able to do, and um, I'm just really looking forward to it. Can you talk us through uh, the uh, like moving overseas European experience? Obviously, is this your second stint with Adelaide? Is, is yeah. That right? yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay. So you went to Europe. You went to Europe, yeah. which yeah. is what every every. 
football or soccer player is dream is to get to Europe, isn't it? Yeah, it's one, goal. Where in Europe did you play? So I played in Holland. Oh right. Um, so NEC Nijmegen. So it was on the back oh, of man. coming back to Adelaide in January. I think that was when the club was they hadn't won a game. Uh -huh. I signed. I think they won the first one before I came, and then we went on a run and we didn't lose um, from yeah the first game I played in. Which was unbelievable timing for myself, and that was kind of where I, um, I that flourished. Was a flex, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was um, so <laughs> no, so nah, it was a it was a thing where you know everything just fell into place for me. We won the league, we won the championship. I think Kyle was in the crowd that day. And I was in the Red Army. In the Red Army, and that's the moment that I look back on in my proudest moment as a player and right. seeing fifty thousand Adelaide United fans there cheering us Enjoy. on. It was yeah, just yeah. electric. Like you can't. Um, I don't know if you'll ever be able to, you know, remake mm. that exact moment. Everything just was perfect. You mm -hmm. know, just went meant one, to be. One nil up, two nil up, two one, three one. Last minute winner. Mm. Everything about that day was just uh, was special, and, and that's what led. While she's cool. While she's cool. While she's cool. One of the greatest calls in Australian <laughs> football history. Surely. Yeah, While she funny. calling Isaias's goal. Was oh, I thought you were talking about the other thing. What, when your voice broke? Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's yeah, nice. <laughs> to bring it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I lay. So I had, I was in Tassie because I, I was supposed to, um, I was supposed to be on a holiday with my missus and my mum in Hobart. And I said to my mum, hey, that's cool. Just to let you know, we're playing Melbourne City to get into the grand final. I don't think we'll win. So I think the holiday is going to be fine. <laughs> so I wanted to win, but I'm like, oh, oh hey, that makes Because this was... Like there was a couple of weeks before you got into a dust up <laughs> against Melbourne City, yeah. so they came back with a point to prove. Standard. This is yeah. basically going into the tunnel, and then I think it was their goalkeeping coach or whatever had a crack at one of our assistants, Powell, <laughs> and then you got involved, which is great because that was your former team. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, I'm coming back to Adelaide for the grand final, so I've rocked up on the Sunday at Adelaide Oval, mm -hmm. and I'm just going, all right, this is great. So we developed like a game day culture where um, we want to have a culture at game day where people get to the ground and they go, I can only experience this if I'm at the game. Mm -hmm. Port Adelaide have done it with Never Tear Us Apart and things like this. So for years and years, I've said Adelaide, the crowd said United. Mm -hmm. And they've really responded mm -hmm. after a goal. So I've got to the Riverbank end of Adelaide Oval and I'm like, great, gone through all the headshots and I've gone, Adelaide Oval, now is our time. And then I went, Adelaide! <laughs> <laughs> and I heard everyone laugh. And I'm, in my head I'm going, nah, no one heard that. There's 50,000 here. People did hear it because oh, the next day it. there was a meme on social media saying, well, like, when you go through puberty in front of 50,000 people. I saw that meme. <laughs> I had a lot. Uh, aware that Bill came off the field once when I had a voice break at Cooper Stadium. He said, bro, I heard you and I laughed. <laughs> I don't know, my, my voice just breaks sometimes when yeah. I get nervous. But we won the game, so we did. it was yeah, amazing. Exactly. Yeah, go for it, man. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you then, what's your highlight of MC? You've emceed some unbelievable things. I get jealous of the guys you meet. I get yeah. jealous of the events you get to be courtside. Yeah, yeah, well. We pay a lot of money to be courtside at games. <laughs> yeah. to sit up close. You're on the field interviewing the players. It's unbelievable. Uh, a highlight and a low light. Something bad that's happened. All right. Yeah. So, probably the most special one. To I know I've got a lot of honourable mentions, but... Um, and it's a reason that you guys might go, oh, that's a bit different, was the, the Women's World Cup, the cricket this year at the MCG. There were 86,000 people at the MCG. Wow. Um, people leading up to that, I think, thought, and you'll see this with Women's World Cup in 23, people thought, originally, Katy Perry is going to be at the MCG. People are going to wow. go to watch yeah. a Katy Perry concert. Thank you. Oh, yeah. The amount of people that cheered on the Australian team, and at the end of it, because I, I think I'm, I've softened because I'm a dad and I've got a daughter, but that moment was about women's sport and women in society. And there was no, I think a lot of the time with women's sport, there's a lot of tokenism with it. We have to do this because it's ticking a box, mm -hmm. but everybody was cheering that team and the pathways it's created for people like my daughter, if she goes, I wanna play cricket, fantastic, you can. With Adelaide United, with the W League side, they're more together than I've ever seen. So if my daughter goes, I want to play football. There's a pathway to do that now, and yeah. they've got the opportunity to that. So it was a nice, yeah. really nice feel, uh, feeling. Uh, yep. Probably the worst event I've emceed um, is Adelaide's next top pet in Rundle Mall. <laughs> and uh, there was basically, in Gawler Place, there was a, literally a catwalk where people would have their cats on leashes. And I'm like, okay. 
is Diana. She's from Salisbury, and this is her long-haired cat. She likes walks on the beach. Yeah, what do you think, judges? And the judges are going, yeah, it's good. Oh, I just can't wait to get it. Can I bring my crocodile on that? Can they do that every year? That would have been a good one. Or a snake. Uncover it right at the end. Yeah. <laughs> this is Cock the Crocs from uh, Glenelg North. <laughs> Did you say yeah. Cock the Crocs? Cock, 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 cock the Crocs. I don't have anything in the reptile room named. Not no, one thing. Because okay. otherwise, I have things die, which was a subject Laz was going to touch on the other day. Yeah, it was just a awkward moment. Um, and you kind of, it's, it's really sad losing things all the time. So I haven't named things for quite some time and uh, got the crocodile, which is a lifelong dream one to keep a crocodile um, and gave it the name Cock. Yep. So uh, mum, mum loves the name Cock the Croc and uh, it's stuck. So we've, we've kept it there. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little bumpy. It's he's a little, not, yeah. A bit of an, a feisty little, little. He's got a bit of attitude. Great. He's how, not, how big is he going to go? He'll get to three meters, so he's a freshwater croc. So eventually, um, he's, he's little. He's, he's like this. He's now. about yeah, forty to fifty centimeters at the moment, probably. When he eats twenty to, goldfish um, a week. Get what? Yeah, twenty goldfish a week. Is that why there's the goldfish? Four goldfish, in there? mate. Oh, yeah. So you were just. <laughs> I thought they were pets. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, I love no. goldfish. <laughs> no, I buy the goldfish weekly. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's You've a, got an expensive hobby. I do have an expensive hobby. Yeah. It's terrible. I mean, yeah, a, a, a large adult frozen rat's twenty bucks. And I have, it's I know, 12 snakes that would eat that each week. So yeah, you do the maths there. I go through 2,000 crickets a week, which is about, yeah, heaps of the deal. I mean, it's um, great. It's expensive, yeah. <laughs> it's expensive, but it gives me an identity away from the pool. Yeah, you know me so as the lizard. Probably, we will have a lizard. That's the next tat then, yeah, isn't, isn't it? A big lizard on the back. That's what we were planning, but. Did we? We Eventually, I, I did want a croc uh, frill neck lizard there at one stage, remember, but we didn't have the space. Uh, uh, any hobbies here that we, about jerseys, is that your... Jerseys, I try to, I try to keep fit. Okay. Because I feel like, as you get older, you can be bald or fat. And I've got... <laughs> All right. <laughs> or... <laughs> I've got... Or you I'm... can be both. <laughs> I've got the choice to control one of them. <laughs> uh, Can I actually ask you a question? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. So, I, was, I eat a lot of food. I'm not saying, oh God, show you. Uh, Newport, 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 I'd like to. This guy, the guy that's walked in from the street, he's making friends. <laughs> well, that was the healthiest thing I've had. Yeah. <laughs> no, my question is a serious yeah. one, because Steph's talking about the journal. So I was reading um, this book about like, Learning about yourself and who you are as a person, mm. which I you know you've both gone through. It's not funny, shut up. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Serious time now. One of the things that they said is if you stand in front of the mirror and you you look at yourself and you go, all right, so what am I looking at right now? Am I mm -hmm. looking at what I want to look like or what I want other people to look like? With mm -hmm. tattoos, mm -hmm. do you find that you get people coming in because they want a particular artwork mm -hmm. for a particular reason, or they want people to know that they've got an artwork for a particular reason. It's less about the meaning and more about the like Both. perceived meaning. Both. Every I do everything and anything. People get them for fashion. People will get it. Oh, it's got to mean something. Other people pick it on the day. It's just really everyone's so yeah. different. But I do it all, man. I do. Some people just want to be covered. They don't want to see skin. They don't want to see blank skin. They find it boring. You're right. Where's yeah. your first one? Can you show us? It's gone now. It's under a whole bunch of other stuff. It was up for you. It's under a whole bunch of other stuff. I was like 15, 14, 15. I grew a big goatee. <laughs> and I went in there and I shouldn't say because oh no I can't go. Can we get a photo of somewhere that we can put onto this video? Uh, goatee? Good question. <laughs> Maybe. And I just said yeah I want that. It was some Chinese thing. Simple. I don't even know what I said. Can't remember. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> See, I thought it'd be a great episode to just break down all of Lance's tattoos on his mm. body. Like, yeah. You know how they like do the prison G break. Yeah, prison yeah. break. Exactly. <laughs> or they do this GQ one with the NBA players. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like the G, like Damien Lillard talk about his tattoos yep. and all the yep. meaning. Be cool to do that with yeah, like Lance. It's a bit of a dark place with some of mine. There's some dark shit on me. But there's dark, darks on me. A lot of people, especially the NBA players that are covered top to bottom, it's like this is where I was at that point. And it's like tells that story of your life. Then. I'll tell you that. I'll, I'll tell you the best thing about my job is that tattooing caters to any subgenre. It caters to athletes, heavy metal dudes, rap dudes, mums, doctors. So I meet everyone. I meet everyone from all walks of life. And it's the best thing ever. It's all about the people for me. The job is that it's cool and I like doing the tattoo, but it's all about the connection with the person. 
probably much like you. So how do you get better? Like you can do a PB and you can score 20 goals and you go, all right, so what's your measure to get better or to train? Uh, I would say um, it's, um, it, it's all personal growth. So I'm, I'm criticizing everything I do myself. And if you're only as good as your last tattoo, so as long as they're all getting better, maybe technically is better, it's probably the best way to gauge it. The lines are cleaner, the shading's smoother. Um, that's probably the best way to gauge that you're kind of improving. Mm. But the best thing, the other best thing about it is I'm always improving. I'm always getting better. So that's a fun part for me. You're never in a lull. You're always wanting to be a bit better. You guys are probably the same. Always trying to be a better yeah, athlete, absolutely. a better person. Mm. It doesn't even have to be what you do. It can be. But you're kind of like a counsellor in a way because you sit there and I you am. listen to... I am. slash therapist. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it all. Double charge. Yeah. All I hear it all. When I've been there, I've had maybe six hours with you. Once, oh, first time we ever spoke, I, I sat and laid on the bed with you for six hours. And He's got some demons. <laughs> and I don't like <laughs> silence either. <laughs> I don't like silence, so it's just like trying to find the next thing to talk about we constantly. Clicked. We click like, very yeah. well. Yeah. I always click with... Uh, I don't know, a lot of athletes, I always click with a lot of athletes. Yeah. I think we have the same kind of mentality with being very driven and always wanting to be better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The, um, the, most, the most pissed off I've ever heard you was the day that they postponed the Olympics. Uh, you were driving to go fishing. Yeah, and you called me. Yeah, we yeah. called you and I said, hey, that's do you right. want to speak yeah, on the radio yeah. about it? I said, I don't want to put any pressure on you. If you don't want to, that's mm. fine, you did. Yeah. But like, you seem to have been in you were ready right then in your training blocks and ready to go and then it's just gone hey let's just stop kind of like you they go hey you know what season stops for a bit a bit mm. so does that guys, uh, how's how tough's that for both of you guys because you were living in a bubble in new south wales for ages and then probably trying to work out moving your shit from Brisbane to Adelaide and all that stuff and then you you play for the role. <laughs> yeah you've got to do all that stuff how hard is that mentally Go I'll go first. I think for me, and as footballers, it was very hard. But to think of someone that obviously prepares solely for a competition that's every four years, I couldn't imagine no, what that would be no, like. Because we, we knew football was going to continue on, but you obviously had no idea what was going to happen with the Olympics, and you've obviously trained for that mm. year. And everything it's all you're structured. Preparing. Yeah. It's all structured for a certain time, isn't it? With yeah. You guys? Well, we still don't really know, like Germany, England, Netherlands, Denmark. They're still bad. Lots of Europe have all gone into full lockdown with yeah, their pools yeah. closed again. So it's like, how's it fair? We mm. train, these guys can't now. But I guess for, for me, initially, probably when I spoke to you that day, I'd spent pretty well two days on the phone talking to media again at that point. And it got to a point where it was like another familiar face. I can be a bit more honest yeah. how I want to be. But again, yeah, we trained for four years for that moment. I was in my best shape of my life, ready to go. And for, for me, it was a normal day, training in the morning, came, did my grocery shopping, came home, had a nap. When I woke up from nap, it was like, the Olympics has been canceled. No, Australia is not going to the Olympic Games. Mm. And I was like, wow, the Olympics Games is going ahead and we're not going. And then it went to a few days later, the Olympic Games is canceled completely. So it was a hard thing to break down. But I think for me, it was a great learning because it's put life into perspective because I go now, there's a whole lot more to life than sport. Mm. Well, a whole lot more. Like people were dying from coronavirus and we're worried about not being able to swim 100 metres at a competition. <laughs> like it's a very minimal thing. Like, yeah, it's my job and my everything, but people are losing lives. Like Carl Anthony Towns lost six family members. Yeah. Did like, look at people like that. Yeah. yeah like geez. Six family members from a, from a virus. Like we need to do everything we possibly can to stop it and, and be supportive of, um, you know, making it go away as quickly as we can, I guess. Listening. Can, can you tell me, like, because COVID for me has been weird, yeah. as has for everyone, but I reckon everyone's walked away and had one thing that they've learned from it or something that they know they've taken for granted. Can you, can you all pinpoint one of them? Absolutely. Well, mine's that there's a whole lot more to life than sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A whole lot more. And it's probably also put into perspective that I need to have something to fall back on when sport's taken away mm -hmm. so quickly. So that'd be mine. I, I think... Um, a good question I think to slow down I think for me just to not be so concerned about work and being here at the right time and is this painting ready and whatever just to slow down and be a human and live and worry about my personal connections with people and just not focused on um, material kind of things mm -hmm. and 
paying whatever bills and it just didn't, it kind of lost, kind of went away for me. I was just more like, is everyone okay? Does anyone need anything that I know? Pick the phone up, call people that I can't go and see. Mm. That was it for me. Right. Yeah, I think it's probably a combination of the two. I think definitely understanding that there's life after sport. There mm. is going to be, there still is. Um, there's players that, or, or athletes that obviously get injured, they have to retire on the spot. People that get, you know, delisted, they're not playing anymore. Um, for me, I never really thought about that before. and. You don't want to ever think about those bad things, but it's going to come to a point in time where you can't play. Um, so to, I guess, have that force upon us with COVID where you knew you were going to play eventually, but it's a great time to reflect and, and to understand yourself. And, and that's really what I went on, like a massive journey of uh, self-discovery to be like, what do I actually like? What is what is my purpose as a, as a person rather than a purpose as you know a footballer, um, as an athlete? So that was really cool. And, and then to to understand that sport and football is what I love. Um, but we, I moved back up to Brisbane because my girlfriend, fiance now, was still there. And um, we started training with 10 of us. We were all from different teams in the A-League. And up there you're allowed to pretty soon after the, the lockdown. And, and it wasn't you know playing football in front of a stadium. That's great and that's cool and, and I love doing that. But it was more about the, uh, the camaraderie. You know, we'd go there, we'd train, we'd work out. And then the losing team of football tennis uh, would have to pay for coffee. It was competitive, it was fun, we were working hard. All the things you do at training, but we didn't need a coach, we didn't need to be professionals, we didn't need to get paid for it. And it was the thing that I loved the most. So that's probably put that into perspective as well, that mm. that's why I'm doing it, not for all this other stuff that comes, comes with it. Mm. What about you? What was your little... Uh, I think like, it's weird, because everyone was reset this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. no matter what you were doing, we saw, like, I'm a big LeBron James guy, and we saw mm -hmm. videos of him in lockdown in his house, even though he's earning so much money, he's yeah. still in lockdown. <laughs> For me, kind of like you lads, like, I was working so much, and I wasn't, I was present, like, at home, but I was always getting ready to do something else. Mm -hmm. So Very I reckon- about the next thing. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. in a way, like, COVID saved my marriage. Wow. Um, so I reckon I'm more, more present husband and father mm, mm -hmm. um so that's great to step back but also it's the, losing my job has taught me a lot about identity and like if you're if you're comfortable knowing who you are mm -hmm. and understanding who you are nothing can actually bring you down of going like you know you can go kyle we can i can ask who you are and if you said oh i'm an athlete i go no you're not like who are you like an athlete yeah. is something that you do and you're you're not you're stefan Mork, who plays football so it actually doesn't define you but what we started doing at home with my daughter is similar to like the the inner game journal each day we write down the three things that we are grateful for every day. My daughter will say like, you picked me up from childcare, I had an ice cream, uh, and you didn't fart. Like, but, but you did fart. That's it, that's it. But she still understands the idea of gratitude. Yeah. And so I'll go, like today, um, it was a sunny day, I could walk to the beach, and I had a glass of wine. Because if you start practicing gratitude, as you're doing, start focusing on how lucky we are to have the things that we have mm -hmm. it takes your focus away from the stuff that we don't have and then it, yeah. everything else that's so material it's irrelevant it just kind of fizzes away doesn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. we think like 20 20 ago if you're in jobs and we're all in different jobs you're thinking what happens after swimming what happens after football if you go hey i don't want to do this anymore mm -hmm. oh i could go work in a cafe unless you couldn't because cafes were shut yeah, down exactly. so everyone went back to zero yeah. and you go what's important what are my values in you it's a very long-winded answer to your question but you um yeah i think just understanding more about yourself has been important it certainly brought out the best and worst in people though because if you look on social media that we're back to people being jerks to one another again. Yeah, like that absolutely. Right. comes around very quickly. Yes. Have you guys done, done the Wheat Bix Challenge? I haven't no, done it. Have yeah. you heard about it? Yeah. Do you, you want to try it? You want to try it? Yeah. You want to try it? One minute. One minute. You got to eat, eat it. What, just one? one. So TZ did it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You just won. I feel like my mouth's dry just thinking. So just yeah. gonna eat the whole thing in one minute. Eat the whole thing and swallow it in under one minute. This yeah. is our little segment. And someone will time it. And someone will time it. Keep the content yeah. flowing. Yeah. I'll be time. Mix, huh? Hey, how many do you do? Official time. It's harder <laughs> than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that, then we'll do the drawing, and we're done. It's harder than it looks. Yeah. Trust me. Don't underestimate the bit. Uh, someone. Uh, are you gonna, are you gonna do it? Hang on, we'll tell you when. Should we count them down? Yeah, on three, three, two, one. Taking bets. Oh. It's harder than it looks. It's ruined the great meal. I can't even do it. Oh. Come on, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Went all over me. I've got your. The great man Brendan Cheese did this. He did it in under a minute. Oh, that's me again. <laughs> I think Boyd might have successfully done it as well. Mm. Love you, oh, darling. Oh, oh, oh. You, buddy. <laughs> right, 30 seconds. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, come on, quick. Are you still okay? I got a lot Have you swallowed any? It's not It actually fun. tastes okay. Mm. Oh, it's very good. 45. <laughs> I can't do it. Are you done? Once, you got one mouthful. How long? Um, Countdown. Hold on. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. I've got a half of You got a close. Uh, that's brilliant. It's harder than it looks. Mm. My jaw. I like it. I water to watch that one. Good. Mm. Wine oh, mix. That's amazing. Good combo. Really wheat like. mix and wine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wheat mix, it tastes good when it's in there. It's Maybe beer. Maybe in there. Wheat and beer. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to try it. And so the wait, reason we're doing this, writing, we are going to sell this. Yeah, J. Walsh. Yeah, we're that. planning on auctioning this off to charity. Yeah, so, you know. Fuck. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Bro, you got to fill up the piece of paper at least. <laughs> And it's so accurate. That's so true. small. <laughs> I've been waiting for the first stick figure. Yeah. It's and there it is. It's happened. I'm put at least put a cap or something on it. No, really You'll get his one very nice here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just hear me a fart. Yeah. I'm so envious of it. Well, I reckon no, that's, that's about it. Perfect. You got to tell people how they get that the, the journal. Yeah. The okay. Time. So yeah, let's plug this. Hold that. Because I'm just going like that. So everyone. Yeah. So that that was the finishing touch. Um, yeah, so you can find it www.theinnergamejournals.com or the Inner Game Journal on Instagram or just look at the Facebook ads which are popping up everywhere in, in Adelaide especially. So Thank you for coming. Oh, thanks, for really really thanks for having me. That food was amazing. We had a really fun oh, time, man. It was good to meet you. Me. That was incredible. Like, I'm sure we'll see you again. Unbelievable. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, really good. <laughs> <laughs>